guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and fun, informative recipe tutorials. If you love learning about cake baking and want to know all of my insider baking secrets, please subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications so you know when I'm posting new videos. And this is purely a bit of random information, but if you've ever looked at the framed artwork behind me and thought to yourself, why would she have something on her walls that says me? Well, I wanted to give you the whole picture so you see that it actually spells home. I had a giggle the other day because it literally just occurred to me that you guys can't see the whole artwork. It's not all about me. It's about me teaching you how to be better bakers and understand a little bit more each time we spend time together. Actually, it's probably the best option, really. So let's get into the tutorial. Today, I'll be making a gluten-free chocolate torte with pears. I've had lots of requests on my channel for tutorials on how to make gluten-free cakes. So here's the first of many. It's a really light, moist and nutty cake. It looks like it would be heavy and dense, but on the contrary, it's anything but. Gather all of your ingredients together. Unsalted butter at room temperature, brown sugar, salt, eggs, dark chocolate chips, vanilla essence or extract, cocoa powder, almond meal. I use the blanched fine almond meal. It holds its form better in the cake if the almonds are finely ground because it acts more like a flour ingredient rather than a crunchy nut flavoring. The first thing I get done is melting and cooling my chocolate chips. So have at the ready a saucepan with boiling water and a metal or glass bowl to rest on top of the rim of the saucepan. You definitely want the bowl to be a lot bigger than the opening of your pan because if you pick a bowl that just fits inside, then you'll find that when you go to remove the bowl, it will have formed a tight vacuum onto the pot and it'll be near impossible to take off of the saucepan. Trust me friends, I've done it badly way too many times to admit. Now in my German chocolate cake tutorial, we melted chocolate in the microwave in short 20 second bursts to prevent the chocolate from burning. Now this is another method of melting chocolate and if you're a beginner, it may be the safer route. It's called a bain-marie and essentially it means heating the food gently over a hot pan of water. And it's a surefire way to melt your chocolate gently. Just leave this over to the side to cool while we prepare the batter. In your mixer with paddle attachment, put your butter and your brown sugar. Now cream these for at least five minutes or more until the mixture is pale, light and fluffy. I've said it many times on my channel, folks. You don't want to rush this step. When your butter sugar mixture looks like mine, we can put the next ingredient in. For most recipes, they will call for the eggs to be added next, but I'm a fan of adding the chocolate first before adding my eggs. I'll explain why. I have a lot of eggs to add to this recipe, six in fact. Now if I added all of the eggs to the butter sugar mix, it will look a little bit curdled by the end because there's an uneven ratio of the fat or the butter to the protein, the eggs. While you're waiting, you can take your almond meal and mix in your cocoa powder. This cocoa powder is a Dutch processed cocoa powder. That's why it's a little bit darker, but you can use any kind of cocoa powder, including the natural cocoa. Just make sure that it's not sweetened. I use a strainer only because I don't have a handheld sifter with big enough holes to sift the almond meal through. I'd be here for days. Add your eggs one at a time and scrape down every second egg addition to make sure you're producing a smooth, even, homogenous mix. Then 
add your vanilla. Okay, I forgot to add my salt earlier, so I'm gonna do that now. Add your almond meal to the mixer. Now don't mix this for a long time. If you do, it may start to extrude the oils from inside of the almonds. And if that happens, your batter will definitely look curdled and you'll have an oily cake when it comes out. Prepare to cut your pear. I use the green Packham pears that have a few days of ripeness but still hold their shape well enough to cut into thin slices for the decoration on top. But you can use whatever variety floats your boat as long as it's firm enough when you cut into it. You'll need to cut 10 thin slices and rough chop the remainder which will fold into the batter. Line the bottom of a nine inch round spring form pan with baking paper and cut around the paper to make it look pretty. That's a rule, you gotta do it. Then pour your batter in. Smooth the top of your batter with a scraper and decorate with the pear slices in a spiral pattern. Now this recipe can be made using any kind of fruits that are in season, like the pears or raspberries, strawberries, bananas, mango, anything you like really. Uh, the most popular fruit we used to sell at the cakery was the mixed berry flavor. It was so popular. You just mix berries, whether they're frozen or fresh, into the batter before you bake it and serve it with a beautiful mixed berry coolie and vanilla or coconut sorbet, yum. Now the pear flavor is delicious on its own, but you can also pair it with a cinnamon ice cream or plain old vanilla. Serve it hot or cold for breakfast or dessert. Any time of the day, it's perfect. Pop it in the oven at 160 degrees Celsius or 325 degrees Fahrenheit for approximately 60 to 90 minutes. I know that's a big variable, but this cake needs it. Look how beautiful and puffy it looks straight out of the oven. Now I took mine out at 80 minutes because my toothpick came out looking slightly nutty with not too much liquid batter stuck to it. This is definitely a low and slow baked cake. If you bake at a normal temperature, the top of the cake will crust over very quickly and leave you with a raw middle. It will sink substantially after cooling and shrink away from the sides a little bit, but that's the characteristic of most gluten-free nut-based cakes and it's completely normal. Wow! Delicious! Let's slice this baby up. and add some of my beautiful Chantilly cream that I showed you how to make in my last Two Minute Tuesday episode. Remember how I told you that this cake looked like it would be heavy and dense? Nope, it's light, a little bit nutty, like me, and not too rich, hmm, also like me, and very, very, very Moorish. There you have it folks, my uber popular recipe for gluten-free chocolate pear tort. I really hope you liked watching it and learnt something new. Please click on the thumbs up icon, subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications. If you have any questions, write them in the comments below and I'll answer them as quickly as I can. Until next time, tell the people closest to you that you love them. Bye. Oh my gosh. This is so good. I usually don't finish all of the cake. I'm finishing it today. And I'm not even hungry.
we're done.